of these guys dress up. I explain the different camps. I break down their whole history. You get lost in the 60s and all this kind of stuff. And then I'll go to some of their doctrines and beliefs and all that. I said, you know, let's switch that up. I'm going to really, the, the, the thing I like about cults that use the Bible is I get to read the Bible. I get to go to the Bible. So I, I hope and I pray, even if you're like, huh? You get to learn some Bible today. And that can never be a bad thing. So thank God for making Hebrews light so we can learn about Obadiah more, right? right. And I'm serious. I really mean that. That's why I did it this way. There was a reason. So here we are on Obadiah 1, 3, and 4. And now here, let me you get other. Now it's time to other the other. But so the moderates will do that. The one Westers got Esau. And that began with the commandment keepers in 1919 because we got documentation going all the way back to the one Westers that they did the Esau thing too. Now, why is that helpful? You didn't know that Esau and the Edomites are one of the main enemies of the Israelites in the Bible. In fact, there's a whole book about them. Whose habitation is high. We know why people love to build skyscrapers and cities. We know they sit up there overlooking the city, all the peons and the plebes. Haven't you seen Batman? That's what they do. They're looking all up there, looking down on everybody. And the class of the Rahu Atisha. Well, everyone knows why people came out of caves, and they still love it up there in their skyscrapers. I'm not kidding you, by the way. The habitation is high. It's translated as white people's skyscrapers uh, under a One West interpretation. And God is saying, you're about to get this large. Thou, though thou exalt itself, thyself as the eagle, Romans, symbol of the eagle. Nazis, symbol of the eagle. United States, symbol of the eagle. Oh, and all, almost all the countries in the ancient Near East use the symbol of the eagle. It's a common symbol for power. It's not just, we just know the Romans and the Nazis in the United States. And though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence I will bring thee down, saith the Lord. Here's where it gets weird, and then we'll do Q&A. They teach that when the United States landed on the moon, if they even believe in that, the reason they said the eagle was landed is because of this passage. And the nest among the stars is the International Space Station. Kid you not. So this is a prophecy against the United States of America. That's what this prophecy is. And so a lot of times they'll say, when was Obadiah 1, 3, and 4 fulfilled? And because uh, that's the way they interpret is, is, uh, is bringing down the United States of America. That's what it's about. But it's really about Edom. And guess what? There are no more ethnically distinct Edomites. They were destroyed numerous times over. The last time we even see one mention is Herod of Edomia. Edomia is the Greek way to say Edom. After that, we don't really see them pop up. We don't know where they were. They're gone. After that, we don't really see them pop up. We don't know where they were. They're gone. After that, we don't really see them pop up. We don't know where they were. They're gone. After that, we don't really see them pop up. We don't know where they were. They're gone. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Racha Ha Kwadash, and double honors. To the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Honors also to you, brethren, fellow believers, and shalom to the elect. So, anyway, um, I just have to chime in on this video. I know other brothers did various videos on this topic dealing with Obadiah. Our job is to defend the gospel, and some people may have an issue with us continuing going back and forth on this particular topic, just like the MOTB, but it's necessary, right? It's repetitious, and this is something we must do. After all, we're the ones pumping the videos out and doing the teaching. So anyway, um, it's really enforcing as well. It's enforcing the truth, okay? So anyway, um, this guy Vocab Malone Once again We kind of figured That he would come up with this There's a couple of guys that said that But there's even a couple of so called white people Who admit that they're still here And that they were the Romans And so forth Right So I don't know where he gets That they just all s somehow vanished What did they do like the dinosaurs as they say A big meteorite hit <laughs> And it was just plagued their potential DNA and they faded off the earth. What we will say is that Edomites, and this is the carnal mind of these guys, and some Israelite groups, you know, some some Edomites will have complexion. So it's not all, also all about skin complexion. Some Edomites will have skin complexion. Some Edomites may even look Chinese, you know. Or they might look Japhetic, or they might look other like various different people. Israelites going to look like different people, right? Deuteronomy twenty-eight and sixty-four 
says we'll be scattered into all nations from one end of the earth even to the other. Now, there was a comment in his page. I wasn't even going to comment to that. You know, them Christians are very low level. I mean, super low level. One Christian said, abide in Christ. He says, <laughs> after this, I be beheld a great multitude. No man could number of all nations, kindreds, peoples, and tongues. So the reason why he tried to say the Edomites is done away with because they're swift judgment for the Edomites. And if it's possible that they're still here, it's a possibility that they're here, then they're going to have to get judgment and there's no repentance for them. And he knows this. This is why all of a sudden, all of God's creations and creatures that he created, all of a sudden as, as human beings and species, he decided to take this one particular species and just wipe them out of the face of the earth as it can be uh, uh, possibly a prophecy. And then he goes on to talk about, I'll get into Revelation 7 in a second. Then he goes on to talk about that we talk about America's curse. is because these guys, these Christians, uh, no different than Christian nationalists. He won't say he's a nationalist. He's about peace and love, okay? But their doctrine teaches that God blessed America, right? And I'm not saying vocab is teaching that, but a, a good portion of Christians is teaching that God blessed America. So where's the videos on that? He blessed them with the conquering of Native Americans and putting the children of Israel, this heinous act that is of biblical proportions. Now, everything else that happened, the 48ers, they could have went through whatever they went through. And all of a sudden, they're the people of God. But the thing that happened... 30 times worse to us and not in just this particular these generations but in the ancient times all of a sudden it's not biblical and then they always we know Esau he's going to steal he's going to cut off you know certain things so you don't know it's all about hiding his identity you know that's what they do you know let's go to Ecclesiastes 4 and 16 it says there is no end of all people Right? Straight to the point. Everybody's got, got to get judge, judged. Let's go to Revelation. This is what, here's a scripture I'm going to get that's going to cut all that. Let's go to Revelation 1. Let's see if this happens. This also cuts that hell doctrine. Let's go to Revelation 1 and let's go to 7. Behold, he cometh in clouds. Talking about Yahweh Shah. They say Jesus. It says, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him. So we do know that the Edomites were back then. And all kindreds of the earth shall bewail because of him, even so a man, a man. So let it be. So wait a minute. If they were done away with, how these people that pierced them, which were Edomites, how is they going to be able to see him when he comes back if they're done away with? That's just something else to discuss. Revelation 1 and 7. It says, After this I beheld a low, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues. See, this is the beautiful thing about getting the, uh, the blue letter, getting the internet, um, and Apostle Tahar brought the information about the uh, blue letter and and even going into the um, uh, like I like to go into the commentaries now as well because he goes into that you can learn a lot in those commentaries in um, the Cambridge and the Elliot Cots and various others before this we didn't I'm, I myself anyway we didn't have resources to blue letter maybe you could have ordered a blue letter then you got to study they knew that we wouldn't study it was a, a term, uh, a terminology, put money in a book because a Negro ain't going to pick it up and read it. You can hide money in a book because Jake is not reading it. Why didn't Jake read? Because Jake really didn't understand. Jake, un only Jake thing Jake knew is I, they, they, they oppressed you so much in school that when you did finally get a B or C, you was happy with that. You wasn't uh, tampering into something that was false history. Anyway, uh, which men could... No man could number of all nations, kindreds, and peoples, and tongues. Right? So, who is these nations, kindreds, peoples, and tongues? Well, let's go to peoples. 
Let's go to peoples. Um, it says here, what it says about peoples, G2992. This is the same thing they did in church. They oppressed you out throughout the whole week. By the time you go to church, you're damn near tired. You want to get in there because you're guilted and going, you know, so you can come home and be cleansed from your sins from the week. Okay? And then what happens is when they tell you to open a book and read, you barely want to open a Bible and read it, but you read it. But then you have a Bible at home and it just sits there and collect dust. Why? Because of the oppression. You felt, hey, man, you, all you're trying to do is work, make some money, get the hell off you. But the, the, the lie was that nobody told us we was Israelites. And if we knew we was Israelites, and I'm talking about the elect, then we would wake up and read that book for ourselves and say, wait a minute. No wonder they took the, uh, gave us a slave Bible. No wonder his, his boys, the Calvinists, gave us those slave Bibles, man. Okay, it says peoples, it says a people, group, tribe, nation, all those who are of the same stock, right, of a great part of population gathered together anywhere. So let's see if that's people, okay, all those are the same stock. Let's go to kindreds. At kindreds, it says a tribe in the New Testament, all persons descended from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch of Jacob, a nation of people. I mean, I don't know how you get around that. Let me see if I see a few precepts. Let me see. Because uh, this, you know, a lot of times you have these precepts. Circumcise. Okay, let me go to Revelation. Um, here's a precept, a reference, Revelation 21 and 12, off of uh, Kindred. It says, and had a wall great. I could have got 11. Let me get 21 and 11. I just wanted to touch on this. Having the glory of Yahweh and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like Jasper stone, clear and crystal. It says, and had a wall great and high and had 12 gates and at the gates, 12 angels, names written therein, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So what happened to everybody? This is sickening with this spiritual Israelite, which the spiritual Israelites are the Israelites, the elect Israelites. You have the non-spiritual and then you have the elect spiritual. So I don't know where they get all this madness from. You would think when all this is written and it all talks about the Israelites, and when you go into the book, the beginning of any book, it talks about the Israelites. Then when it says Jew or Greek, that's another video. We done did several videos on that. The Grecian, the, uh, the Hellenist Jews, you know. It's, it's all there. So all of a sudden, it's got to be labeled. In fact, even in Revelation uh, 7, where it says all nations, kindreds, peoples, and tongue, when you go back before that, it lists all the 12, the 144,000. And then these people want to, and then what they're trying to do is push the ideology is that those people in the, in the, in the so-called holy land. You know? So anyway, when you go to Obadiah, when you go to Obadiah, this this is also proven that they have they what they have is a G O D G O D it's called God satellite. You can look this stuff up. And they you know, so in fact let me look this up real quick. The G O D satellite. Now the satellite is called a G O D for a reason because it, it's called the global orbiting device, which is set up for the M O T B. See, everything that vocab is teaching, everything he's trying to wipe away, all that that they're teaching, that's why they don't teach prophecy. That's why they don't go into the end times. That's why they don't deal with anything on that level because it doesn't profit them. Only thing profit them is talk about Hebrew Israelites, you know, and keep feeding a Christian community and take food out of the other pastors' mouths and feed themselves. Anyway, what is the God satellite? A little satellite named after a mythological, and now they got a double god, I think, named after a mythological Norse god of the dawn, <laughs> will be sent into orbit this month to collect data on Earth's atmosphere. The nano satellite known as Dillinger is about the size of a, a table picture frame and will 
carry six instruments, one of which is smaller than a fingernail. And that's just a small one. They have even bigger ones. You know, I think they call them all God, believe it or not. They have so many of them. Um, that's why they have what you call Space Force, because they got the missiles linked with it. So we'll read Obadiah, and it says they set their nests amongst the stars, even going to their power structure. That's part of the power structure. And it ain't just the U.S. is doing that. That's true. But you got Russia. Well, guess what? They all are the Edomians, you know? But this place will get judged because this is where you took the children of Israel and you did all that that you did to the children of Israel and judgment has to come. And of course, the people are in fear. I mean, there's certain people that don't believe it, but they want to hear vocab's words so they can feel protected. But no matter what you say or what you hear, ain't going to change what happens. You know, judgment's still coming to them. They haven't got received any judgment. There's no archaeological proof or any evidence. So what? They abandoned the caves. That's because the Most High lifted them up. And they made every city a cave, so to speak. Anyway, that's all I have on that. Shalom.